Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for watching as we look at describing distributions. So we're not just going to look at a whole list of adjectives here. We're looking at specific things we look at when viewing histograms. So we did histograms in the last lesson. Remember, they are a way to display numerical data and the bars are touching. Other than that, they're pretty similar to a column graph. So let's look at a few examples. So let's look at these three histograms here. Now, for any histograms, frequency is always along the vertical axis. So if we look first at the histogram in red, so what we can see from this histogram here is that there is a higher frequency, so they're occurring more scores that are close to the minimum. So higher frequency of scores close to the minimum. Okay, so this is numerical data, so it's obviously ordered. The minimum is here. Here, in the blue one, the minimum is here. And hopefully what you can see is that it's basically the scores are evenly distributed. There aren't more scores closer to the minimum or to the maximum. The highest frequency of scores is close to the middle. So higher frequency, closer to middle. And then in the last one, the brown one, you can see it's the opposite of the red one. So there's a higher frequency of scores, these bars here, higher frequency of scores closer to the maximum score. So of course the maximum score is here because this is ordered, okay? So we have special words to describe these situations. And unfortunately, they're a bit counterintuitive. So when we have more scores closer to the minimum or maximum, we say that the data is skewed. And there are two types of skewness. And it sort of goes in the opposite direction than you would think. So if there are a higher frequency of scores closer to the minimum, we say that that data is positively skewed. So this histogram in red shows positively skewed data. The reason it's positively skewed, there are more lower scores, if you like. Scores are clustered around the minimum. The brown histogram, we saw that there were a higher frequency of scores closer to the maximum of scores. Scores were clustered towards the maximum and that data is skewed, but we say it's negatively skewed. So why I say this goes in the opposite way than you would expect, negatively skewed, there are more high scores. Most people would think that negatively skewed wouldn't that mean that there are more lower scores. Another way you can look at it is which way, if I draw an arrow along the tops of the scores, the tops of each bar, which way does it point? So you can see here, if I draw an arrow here going down, it's pointing to the more positive side of the x-axis, whatever the numbers are. And here in the negatively skewed data, if I draw a line, an arrow going down, pointing towards the lowest frequency score, it's pointing towards the more negative side of the x-axis, which would be over there. So I know it's not easy, but you just have to remember, positively skewed means scores are clustered towards the minimum. Negatively skewed means scores are clustered towards the maximum. Now, if it's not skewed, if it's not positively skewed and not negatively skewed, it must be this situation in the middle, in which case we say it's not skewed or symmetrical. And that makes sense because there is a lot of symmetry about the histogram here. You can see that, you know, if I draw a line through the middle here, this side here is basically a mirror image of that side. There is symmetry there. So that's how we describe distributions in terms of their skewness. So what that would mean in practice, let's say we did a maths test. So let's say I tell you the average was 80%. That doesn't tell you a lot. We could have had a lot of people get above the average. We could have had a lot of people below the average because the mean and the median are not the same thing. So if I tell you the test average was 80%, if the data, like 
this here was positively skewed, that means a lot of people got below 80%. And there were probably a few people who got, you know, really high and brought the average up. If I tell the average was, say, 80% and the data was negatively skewed, that means that there are a lot of, uh, sorry, there are only a few people down here who got below 80%, most people got above the average. So there'd be, you know, a lot of people who got in the 80s and then a few people who got, you know, say in the 50s, bringing the score down. So that's what actually is meant by positively and negatively skewed. All right, now we're going to look at other ways to describe the data, this time in terms of modality. Okay, so we have here three histograms. Again, we should note that because they're histograms, frequency is along the vertical axis. And that means that the taller the bar is, the more often it occurred. So hopefully we remember that in statistics, the word mode means like the most common score. So the tallest bar in a histogram represents the mode. Whatever number is underneath it, that represents the mode. We can describe histograms in terms of how many modes they have. So if we look at the first histogram, the red one, we can see here there's one bar that's taller than all the others, and we call that a peak. So that there is the mode of this data. So this histogram has one mode. And so we say it's uni, meaning one, unimodal. So the red histogram is example of a unimodal histogram. I'll write it again underneath. That means it has one peak and one mode. Now this has nothing to do with skewness. In fact, all of the histograms I showed you on the previous slides, they were all unimodal. It doesn't matter whether it's symmetric, negatively skewed, or positively skewed. It can still be unimodal, or it can be bimodal or multimodal. So the second histogram here, we can see that there are two peaks. It doesn't matter that this peak here is slightly more than this peak here. This basically has two modes, two most common scores. And so we call it bi, meaning two, bimodal. And then if it has more than two peaks, this one in brown has three peaks, we say it's multimodal. Okay, so these are different ways that we can class histograms. So a histogram could be, say, unimodal and positively skewed. It could be bimodal and symmetric, whatever. So this is just two ways that we've gone through to describe data, to describe the distribution of data from a histogram. All right, the last thing we need to be able to do is use a histogram to find the centre of our data. So I'll show you that now. Please pause and copy down if you need this. So we're going to look at this histogram and use it to find the centre of our data, the middle point of the data. So yes, it's just like the median. Now that's sometimes really easy. So if you have a histogram like this that is symmetrical, it's pretty easy to find the centre of the data. You just find the peak. That's what happens with symmetrical data. So clearly the centre of the data would be here, whatever that number was. But when you have data that's skewed or that doesn't look like that, it can become harder. Now we're going to use a proper mathematical way to find the centre of the data. We're not just going to look at it and guess. So what we do is we let n be the number of scores. And we can figure that out from the frequency axis of the histogram. So the middle score, the middle point of the data, you just add 1 to n and divide by 2, and that's the number of the score that is in the middle. So let's look at our histogram here. So we can easily figure out how many scores there are in total. So there's five scores between 0 and 10, one between 10 and 20, four between 20 and 30, and then there's another three that are above 30. Okay, so the total number of scores, this is n. You just add those up and you get 13. So let's use our formula here. So n plus 1 on 2 will be 13 plus 1 on 2 
which equals 7. So the middle score will be the seventh score. So what we do is we count up until we come to the seventh score. So 0 to 10 is 5 scores, then we've got one more score here, so that's 6 scores. So the seventh score is in this bar here. Now, this is not a histogram where each individual score has its own bar. This is a grouped histogram. You can have grouped histograms. This bar that we're talking about here represents all the scores between 20 and 30. So instead of giving one middle score, we give that class. So that would be the class of 20 but less than 30. So 20 to 29, that would be the middle class, okay? If I get rid of these numbers underneath, and let's say I replace them so that each bar has the same number, so I put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the middle score has an actual score. It's not a group of scores. So in this case, the middle score would still be the seventh score, and we would say that the middle of the data there is two. But anyway, whether we go this way with group data, or each bar has each bar has its own score, the centre of the data is right here. It's this bar here. All right, thank you for watching. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.